Sorry. Welcome everyone. I hope everyone is done with your lunch and we all are ready for our next session. It's a wonderful event, Health Summit. And um, after pandemic, definitely we all have realized how important our good health is. And our next session will be on future of alternative and integrated medicines. So ladies and gentlemen, let's start the next session. Um, I would like to invite all our wonderful panelists and the speakers for the session are Dr. Ram Shorf, Director, Charak Pharma, Dr. Kuldeep Kohli, Director, Ayush GOI, Dr. Mickey Mehta, Global Leading Holistic Health Guru, Corporate Life Coach. And uh, ladies and gentlemen, this session will be moderated by Dr. Mukesh Batra, Founder and Chairman, Emeritus, Dr. Batra's Group, Co-Chairman, Health and Fitness Committee, IMC. Ladies and gentlemen, I would just like to give you a quick bio. The name Dr. Batra's TM is today synonymous with homeopathy. The man behind the brand, Dr. Mukesh Batra, is a homeopath of international reputation a pioneering entrepreneur who has revolutionized homeopathy across the world over the last 40 years. Dr. Batra is founder and chairman emeritus of Dr. Batra's TM group of companies, which encompasses the largest chain of homeopathic clinics, daycare aesthetic centers, and health and wellness product. The first to initiate standardized patient care, electronic case histories, and electronic data management systems in homeopathic practice as early as 1982. Dr. Batra is globally acknowledged for his unparalleled achievement of fusing homeopathic healing with state-of-the-art technology. Ladies and gentlemen, Dr. Batra is the recipient of numerous awards such as Health Professional of the Decade, Global Indian of the Year, Transformational Leader of the Decade, Asia's Most Promising Leader in Healthcare Dubai, World Leader Business Person Morocco, and CEO of Year Germany. Wow. Dr. Batra has also been honored with the Padma Shri for Medicine Homeopathy in 2012. Sir, it's such an honor to have you here. And now, sir, I would request you to please take the session forward. Thank you very much, Zina. For a moment, I thought that you were going to run the session through with my bio itself. But thank you for your kind words and uh, thank you for the very fabulous introduction. We now have to live up to it. Uh, a very good afternoon to everybody who's listening to all of us and a very warm afternoon to all our panelists as well. I hope that all of you have had a healthy lunch and are fit and raring to go. I'd also like to thank IMC, especially, you know, Rajivji for having included wellness in the itinerary uh, of this summit. We, we are talking of, uh, of, you know, of ideations and, and, you know, leaders in, in thought. And I believe that this is a beginning of having integrated medicine as part of a health summit, uh, you know, done by, you know, being conducted by IMC. Uh, I also think, however, that perhaps this was inevitable because an industry body could not ignore a $4 trillion wellness, in, wellness global industry, which represents 5% of global economy. Let us start today with Dr. Ram Shroff offering his opening comments. A brief introduction to Ram. Dr. Shroff is one of the promoters of Charak Pharma, and thank you also, Ram, for having sponsored this event. I'm so glad that an alternative medicine you know, company is sponsoring a health summit. I'm so proud of you. Thank you so much for doing that. Thank you for the and honor. Thank you also for spreading the growth of Charak uh, in international markets in more than 30 countries. Uh, domestically also, under his leadership, Charak has launched an OTC division and he's also professionalized the company and introduce the use of technology in helping sales distribution and overall company operations. So thank you, Ram, for spending your time with us. And over to you now for your opening remarks. No, so I mean, 
Uh, let me start first by, of course, good afternoon, and I hope that everyone is safe in this current environment. And uh, it would have been a further honor to have met uh, personally, but nonetheless, we have to make most of what is with us. Um, so, I mean, it's great to be part of this uh, panel with such luminaries, such as the other three panelists who are there with me. So it's my honor, and uh, thank you for that. So I think to dive right into, you know, alternate medicine of which Ayurveda is one of the, you know, large components. I think just to give a perspective of what the market is like today, you know, before we go into what is the future, is that today itself, the market is, ex you know, expected to be in the range of about 600 million or so, and uh, 600 billion rather uh, in terms of Indian rupees. And it is expected that in an, by 2024, it should reach in excess of 800 billion uh, rupees and growing at about 16% uh, year on year. Globally, as Dr. Batra has already said that the entire herbal stroke alternative medicine is expected by 2050 to be anything in between, you know, six to $7 trillion, which itself makes it a very, formidable kind of uh, marketplace. Uh, within India, we have, uh, you know, from a manufacturing corporate uh, point of view, there are about close to 9,000 odd uh, manufacturing units. Of course, a lot of these also fall into, uh, you know, the, the larger ones would be in the range of about 20 to uh, 15 to 20 or so. Otherwise, many of them are much smaller in terms of size. I think from Ayurveda point of view, I would definitely call this as one of the golden ages because I don't think, uh, you know, the acceptance of Ayurveda, the way that it has uh, exploded in the last, last few years has, has never been this uh, kind of this big or this uh, uh, wonderful for uh, everyone to not only benefit in terms of the positive effects, but even commercially as uh, companies. And I think one of the key reasons for this is <clears throat> the awareness spread that has happened, the, the need for alternative medicines, which people have now as consumers become more kind of accepting and more uh, informed. And also, I think one of the key things which uh, Dr. Kohli also here, who's a fellow panelist in terms of an Ayurvedic expert, will agree the good aspect of Ayurveda is that you can take it with conventional medicine. It's not that you need to not, uh, you know, kind of is not contradict uh, indicated at that point in time. Now, just to break up what the Ayurvedic market is like, I mean, you have, of course, the very classical kind of uh, preparations which are there, which are still uh, made by many companies and also Ayurvedic doctors. In addition to companies like ours, we make patent and proprietary medicine, which are our own formulated and clinically tried and tested. I think one of the key aspects of differentiators that uh, we try to put and companies uh, with our background is the scientific research behind these formulations. Because again, the way that these products are sold in the market are, of course, one is the OTC route where per se, in any case, you don't need a prescription for Ayurvedic products, but you uh, people can go over the counter and buy it. Or we sell through the doctor route, which is like any pharma company where you have to have, uh, you know, kind of uh, sell it to doctors and market it through them. Of course, in addition to this, you also have cosmetics and personal care products. Also, veterinary products are now increasing substantially. So that's another market that is uh, opening up to a large extent. And nutraceuticals, which of course is kind of an allied uh, market. I mean, now really from a future point of view, I mean, and me being a trained uh, medical practitioner, though I've done my MBBS, uh, is that I think the future is all of us should see it as medical people or in the medical fraternity is the impact on whatever that we're doing on the well-being of the patient. I think that's the most important thing. Now, whether it is conventional medicine or homeopathy or Ayurveda or, or acupuncture, whatever it is, so long as there's an integrated approach I think that is the future and that's the key towards improving the wellness of the individual and wellness of patients. So that's something that one should really work on. And I think in the in current situation, the last year that we've happened, the use of technology and the use of online consultation has kind of exploded. They, they've seen, like, I mean, all of us have experienced that there's a 
multifold use of um, online gadgets or online this platform itself, Zoom. I mean, till one year ago, no one even knew what Zoom was. And now everyone is on Zoom or Microsoft meetings, etc. So the point is that, again, uh, technically, te uh, online consultation, etc. need online pharmacies, which have uh, grown substantially. These are areas that really need to be focused on. But within this, we also look, need to look at the regulation aspect of this, because this is very, very important. At the end of the day, we are talking about health and well-being, and therefore regulation from a government point of view is critical, because we also see many, many small companies. I mean, one is always happy to get competition, but competition which is regulated is always good from a point of view. Again, the end objective is the wellness of the people. So that's very clear and important. Of course, from an overall perspective, again, from future, because we're taking away from nature, I think it's very important that all companies need to give back. And therefore, plantations, etc., is something that we also do in a small way. Of course, we need to do much more, which we're working towards. But I think this is something that all of us need to look at. And in addition to this, of course, uh, you know, uh, I think we need to, as all corporates, again, look at the CSR aspect of things. In today's day and age, that is again a very, very important aspect. And uh, that's what it is. Uh, from my point of view, I think I've got five minutes. So I will just end by saying that the future is definitely there from an online platform point of view, because traditionally the formulation beyond the point you will not be able to change. Of course, you can keep further standardizing, et cetera, which a lot of companies are doing. But the end reach is something that we can keep working on through technology. So yeah, I think that's- Thank you very much, Dr. Ram. Thank you for the insight and uh, for, for the wonderful thoughts. Uh, I must mention over here that in many countries of the world, uh, the nomenclature is now changed from alternative medicine to complementary medicine because it actually complements the existing system of medicine and then there is no clash within the two. You can really have both uh, together very safely. All right. Uh, so thank you for your thoughts and of course, uh, we'll get a little more uh, into some more discussion as we go along. Our next panelist uh, is Dr. Mickey Mehta, who is a global leading holistic health guru and a corporate life coach uh, to Bollywood superstars, top politicians, and uh, you know India at the corporate level, and also has trained many Miss Worlds and Miss Universes. And I'm glad that he's with us today. He's also trained police, army, navy, and air force personnel. He has an honorary double degree in holistic health and life sciences from the Open International University of Complementary Medicine. Dr. Mehta has, there is a recipient of many awards and one of them, of course, is the 100 more impactful wellness leaders of the world. So welcome Mickey to this uh, conclave and summit today. Uh, Thank you. Before I ask you my first question, I'd just like to mention that there's a very, very strong wellness market all over the world today. The wellness travel market or the wellness, yeah. uh, you know, fitness industry, if I may use that word. It's mm. estimated to be over 600 billion US dollars. And, you know, interestingly enough, China and India are the number one and num number two emerging markets in the world and growing markets as far as this is concerned. So I'd like to have your opinion first on how do you think you could popularize India as a medical tourism destination for alternative health like fitness and yoga? Okay, well, there is so much I wanted to say, but I will address your question first. That India is a boom of wellness. Wellness was born from India. And uh, of course, so if you look at people, places like Rishikesh today, if you look at Dehradun, if you look at North, if you look at South Kerala, now if you look at Bangalore and Chennai, and now Maharashtra has also very many upcoming wellness retreats. So I believe that India and Maharashtra is going to have a fair share of probably triple or quadruple growth in wellness, especially after pandemic. So what should, we do to, what should we do to promote this? What should yes. we do to promote this? So what we should do, I mean, as families, since we cannot do other vacations as families, we must take the initiative of opting for 
wellness vacations, where there are retreats, where there are Ayurveda treatments, where there is nature cure, where there is a tranquility, serenity, and go away from the city. And in the lap of nature, do yoga, do meditation, do Ayurveda, do homeopathy, do your spa treatments, and be well. So I think each one, each one, each family should do that. The state government of Maharashtra is doing enough. And now, of course, in Modi ji's regime, India, Ayush is doing a lot to increase the awareness of wellness. So let me tell you, sir, in a nutshell, that um, I'm popularly called uh, Mickey by MBBS, not Munna by MBBS, but Mickey by MBBS, because I'm not a mainstream doctor. That's number one. I believe that medicine cures nature heals. And the best element in nature that cures and heals people is love, the love of the doctor. Somebody would know that Dr. Mukesh Bhotra is going to call at 5 p.m. to discuss. The healing would start automatically with the feel-good factor. Because it's a touch and the passion and compassion, empathy of a personality which acts as a medicine first. I believe, sir, that India is the land of Sanskrit and Sanskrit, Sanskrit is not just language. It's a science of medicine, science of transformation. Sanskriti. So Sanskriti is the Kirti of Sanskars, Kirti of Sansar, and that is all about Aushad and healing. So India, as I said, is the womb of wellness. Ayurveda, yoga was all born here. And why do we need to ape the West when everything here was so much in pristine form? We don't need a hot yoga. We don't need a power yoga for them to teach us what pristine, simple Sahaj yoga is all about. And homeopathy and Ayurveda has been growing, proliferating in India, even Yunani, not to forget Yunani. So for that matter, integrated approach. So Ahar, Vihar, Vishram, Aushad, these are the four pillars of Ayurveda as we understand. And I very, you know, always with a tongue in cheek tell people, that if it becomes up to your chit, it will Okay, and then I say that Ahar, Vihar, and Vishram is just enough to stabilize your kapha. And then, of course, so chitta, you know, kapha, chitta, and chitta. And I would say vata. Agar bigadegi aapki vata, to lagdegi aapki vata. So these element dynamic forces of our body, if they are not in harmony, and if they are not harmonized with pranayama, yoga, meditation, aushad, herbs, Okay, Panchakarma, then obviously man's health can never be restored and will never come back in equilibrium. So my appeal to the world is that promote yoga, Ayurveda and homeopathy, Udhani as much as possible, not shying away from modern medicine, but alongside so that we don't need modern medicine because modern medicine is toxic. Thank you, Miki. Thank you for your thoughts and uh, you know for the direction for alternative health. Uh, before I go on to our next panelist, Dr. Kohli, uh, since I'm also representing homeopathy, just a little bit about homeopathy as well. You alluded to it a little bit in your talk. Uh, so, you know, the homeopathic market all over the world is about 6 billion US dollars. There are 500 million people who use homeopathic medicine, out of which 100 million are in India. India has the largest number of homeopathic doctors in the world and the largest number of homeopathic colleges as well, which are more than 130. And uh, it has more than 200,000 homeopathic doctors, out of which 100,000 actually practicing and 12,000 new doctors pass out every year from universities. According to World Health Organization, it's the fastest growing system of medicine in the world and it's the second largest system in the world, even though it's the youngest. It's patronized by the royal family of UK and it is legally practiced in 180 countries of the world. A little more about homeopathy as we go along, uh, but for the time being, this is a good introduction. Uh, uh, before I ask uh, and introduce uh, Dr. Kohli, uh, I was just uh, you know, reading a little bit of research before I came into this meeting. And I found that there's an Accenture report which shows that more and more young people are moving towards alternative medicines. You know, the, and also that the annual budget for Ayush was increased by 15% last year to almost 2,000 crores. My question to you, Dr. Kohli, really is how is the government using these funds to popularize Ayush. The best person that can ask this question is Dr. Kohli, because Dr. Kohli is the director of Ayush in Maharashtra. 
He's also the co-chairperson of the task force for Ayush. And we'll come to a little, a few questions on, 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 on COVID as well, a little later on in the program. So we won't touch it now. Sure, sure. Uh, he also served as a COVID World Health Organization consultant for traditional medicine in Southeast Asia. He's on the Advisory Council of Research for Hafkin Institute. He's a recipient of many awards, including the Pranacharya title and the Maharishi, the Maharishi Anasai Patwardhan Award and also the Lifetime Achievement Award, the Brahma Award conferred by Niki Yog. So thank you for being on the panel, Doc. Would you, uh, would you, you know, kind, you know, just tell us now, what do you think Ayush is doing now to popularize homeopathy, Ayurveda, Yunani, sure. and Yoga uh, in Maharashtra and in India and in Southeast Asia? And also, why do you think that more and more young people are turning to homeopathy and to Ayurveda and to alternatives? Thank Over you, thank you, Dr. Batra. Thank you so much. Uh, I am really enlightened today with the presence of uh, luminaries like Dr. Mukesh Patra, Dr. Mickey Mehta, and Dr. Ram, who has been a very good friend for the last several decades. Uh, you see, the question is uh, uh, what Ayush is doing. Now, Ayush at the government of India level, you said the funds have been doubled. You're right. The funds are going up. And uh, the expenditure is also going up. There are several schemes that Government of India, uh, Ayush Mantralaya runs. Uh, the focus, the major, I will not be able to count all those schemes over here, but the major focus of uh, Ministry of Ayush is to see that there is a co-location of uh, Ayurvedic, homeopathic, Yunani doctors, and uh, to have yoga experts at community health center levels, at primary health center levels, at rural health centers, at uh, district health, uh, district uh, hospitals. So everywhere no, now we have under the banner of uh, earlier we used to have national health mission, national uh, urban mission or national health mission which was uh, first uh, started around uh, 10 years ago. Then around five years ago we started the national Ayush mission. So you have components of Ayush in both the schemes. National Ayush mission the basic target is to see that people have when they walk into a a uh, healthcare facility like a primary health center or a district hospital, they have, been, they have an informed choice of going to an Ayurveda or a homeopathic or a Yonani doctor and uh, simultaneously to have some yoga practices learned from that center. I'm happy that most of these, thing, these things have been accomplished by Ministry of Ayush in all, almost all the states. The targets have been achieved. Now you'll find that most of the states at primary health centers have co-located Ayurveda, Yunani, homeopathic doctors and at district levels and at taluka levels, you have the yoga experts who are teaching yoga to uh, for th those minor issues that they can be handled or for the lifestyle changes that people want to do. That's one. Second is about, uh, this is about the systems per se into the healthcare delivery system. But otherwise, uh, IUS Mantrala is also uh, actively engaged in opening up new institutes, as you would agree that education is the basis for the, the strength of any system. If you don't have a good educational system, the system won't survive. So having good uh, academic institutes, producing good students, producing good teachers, thereby producing good research, and thereby giving good, good healthcare tertiary delivery at these uh, Ayurveda homeopathic institutes uh, is one of the priorities of Ayush Mantralaya. So a certain amount of money is also being spent on R&D, clinical research, absolutely, and, absolutely. And, and, and as well on prevention. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Uh, you would, uh, Dr. Batra, I think you would uh, uh, agree with me that in uh, during COVID times, yes. Ministry of Ayush got around 1,500 proposals from all across the country on research. They have taken ahead around 35 to 40 proposals for a detailed research, and the research is on. Much of the research is over, and that is being analyzed at Ministry of Ayush. Fortunately, after a long, long time, we have uh, one secretary of Ayush who is a technocrat. If you are aware, Dr. Rajesh Koteja, who is an Ayurveda doctor, he was a vice chancellor of Gujarat Ayurveda University. He knows the problems of the systems, that Ayush systems. And hence, he is able to deliver much better than what was being handled earlier. Of course, what is being done today is also a, uh, a mark of some kind of evolution because anything grows by evolution gradually. So people have learned through the years as to how to handle these IU systems. And a lot of funds 
another thing that i want to highlight over here the medicinal plants are the basis for the industry and for any system basically uh, if you want to grow ayurveda if you don't have medicinal plants there are extinct species which are going away from the world they are going to get uh, extinct in a few years to preserve them or to get enough amount of uh, herbs for the use just as somebody asked me how do you get so much of amla that so much of chavan prash is being sold in the market itna to amla hi nahi hota but that's wrong we we have a lot of amla to cater to the needs of the whole industry but the only issue was in one of the conferences i highlighted that the, the we ought to have much more much more supply of uh, uh, herbal medicine uh, herbs because if everybody on the earth if everybody on the earth start consuming one amla a day or one chavan one spoon of chavan prash a day what will happen to amla it will be absolutely out of the world therefore we have to prepare our, ourselves to that because we are advertising to that effect we are saying you have chavan prash and you will be again young and because the story comes from chavan rishi who lived for 1000 years after uh, consuming chavan prash could be mythological i don't know but the whole idea is that you will live longer if you keep consuming chavan prash so the story comes back to amla so we have to prepare dr kohli that uh, comes back to my earlier question that that brings me back to my earlier question of why is it that young the people are turning to alternative systems of medicine and just a very quick answer yeah. because we will uh, run out of time very soon so. dr batra ji i i why do you think younger people are turning to i i am i am coming to that the younger people are more conscious of their health as on today they don't want to con- consume chemical medicines that's number one number two we have all adopted technology so the moment the, the these younger lot they are always on tabs and they on their the cell phones and uh, uh, laptops the moment they open any site there is a uh, charak ka chavan prash or charak ka neo tablet charak ka or maybe dabar ka chavan prash or somebody else is some product so they are amused by it that that's one i mean that may not be the only reason but more importantly they don't want to they are not now more conscious of not taking chemical medicines so far as they can avoid they will avoid yeah. the chemical medicines yeah that that's one reason that uh, people are now coming back to nature and uh, these are used systems yeah, of medicine health aware. there's something more health aware than the earlier generation yeah if i can get cured of uh, cervical spondylitis after following dr uh, mickey mehta probably why should i be going for painkillers or why should i be going to an ortho if a little bit of ayush medicine which is na- very close to nature is given and the problem is gone now the younger lot is uh, all learning to uh, handle this issue and therefore younger people are now probably technology has a lot of role in it thank you dr kohli that's yeah. very reassuring that you know when you talk of the future of alternative health that the young generation is actually taking to it in a absolutely, very big way absolutely that that's, was a very valid question that that's very wonderful uh, for okay. all alternative systems of medicine uh, you know any discussion would be incomplete if we were not to talk about the use of alternative medicines in present covid times and in future pandemics yes uh, as we all know that you know the homeopathic medicine arsenic alp 30 was recommended by the ayush ministry as a preventive that's, right. that's right. the supreme court recently posted a pasted a past judgment along homeopaths to use homeopathic medicine as a preventive and in early cases of covid but not claim a cure the gujarat government has distributed over 3 and a half crore you know to to to, to more than 3 and a half crore people this medicine as a preventive and we at dr batras have distributed more than 2 crore doses last year out yes. of which 1 crore were totally free of charge to the entire maharashtra police force as a preventive i just very quickly like maybe in one or two lines uh, your comments from each and every one of you starting with dr ram your comments on how alternative health or complementary medicine can help during covid and during ep- epidemics so, so i think uh, you have already covered part of it but uh, just to add to that um, there have been enough instances and now a lot of clinical data uh, that is emerging and yet to emerge also is like see steam inhalation is one uh, classic uh, basic thing that has been recommended by everyone so that is definitely one the other thing is also use of certain oils which need to be applied into your nostrils which again create some form of a filter in terms of herbs also 
herbs like giloy ashwagandha etc which help in overall immunity have been well documented not only now but historically now, having said that you know i'm a firm believer that yes all of these things do help but that does not mean that this is a silver bullet for anything for that matter even vaccine is not a silver bullet and i think it's very important to express this especially in these current times as much as we have scientific documentation for everything you still need to be careful and uh, i think uh, if that is maintained all these things will always enhance your ability to fight the disease but beyond the point of course one has to be careful so we also have a product which we are still um, i mean trials are on and therefore again as you rightly said we cannot claim a cure but there is historic evidence of these herbs which help in enhancing the overall immunity so I, I, I just, uh, yeah, that's what it is. That's again reassuring. And of course, uh, you know, I would still recommend that people do get vaccinated because that's of one course. way of, uh, <laughs> you know, getting into herd immunity quickly and making sure that, you know, we that's are all, so let's not, uh, you know, let's not bring down the, uh, the goodness of a vaccine. And you know, Absolutely. we all do, but of course, it's also good to, to raise your own immunity. And uh, this is what homeopathy believes as, as well, that on one side, we have the virus, which is strong or weak, and on the other side, you have the human body with this level of humanity. So it's always a fight and a balance between the two, and whichever is stronger wins. So if you have a good immunity, then you're less likely to fall sick or get a very mild attack. If you have a weak immunity or a poor immunity, you're likely to fall sick more often and get a more severe attack if the virus is very strong or the bacteria is very strong, whatever it may be. So Dr. Mehta, coming back to you, and again, very quickly, uh, how do you think we could, you know, build our immunity. Just three quick steps of how could we build immunity uh, through wellness. So I always tell people that have breath for breakfast because breath is fundamental to life. Urja, prana, vayu and of course akasha. So you get everything in that breath when you inhale consciously and when you fill up all your five lobes of your lungs, that is the time you empower yourself with oxygen laden blood to go to all cells for them to work with superior vitality. That's number one. Number two, soak yourself in the sun a lot in the morning because that is thermogenesis. It, it increases your body temperature. It dilates your blood vessels. It increases serotonin. It triggers the endocrine system in the body. And of course, doing postures. So yoga, yoga asanas, postures in poetry. Very dynamic in nature. I mean, your central nervous system, your sympathetic, parasympathetic nervous system, your endocrine system, they are extremely alert with yoga. Each time your body squeezes and contracts, toxins ooze out. Each time the body stretches, the fresh laden nutrients with blood, you know, blood and oxygen, they go inside. Your respiratory tract works very well. Deep breathing, you know, makes your diaphragm move 12 to 13 centimeters. And your respiratory tract remains vibrant. The lodged and harbored viruses and bacteria in your adenoids are flushed out. Body dilates, temperature goes up to 97, 98, and the body is capable to fight its own battle. I'm also told that initially, your thymus glands immediately secrete no sooner you start breathing and do yoga. And also when you are in sun, apart from serotonin, I mean, your thymus secretions are on. And with yoga also, not just your cytokine storms are controlled and regulated, but your T cells and your B cells, your B cells, your bone marrow cells, they secrete to the optimum level, of course. Thank Aram you. is also important. Thank you. Thank you, Dr. Mehta, for the gyan uh, that you're imparting to all our listeners. I'm happy to, to, to let you know that we've crossed more than 100 people on this chat. And if you have any questions to ask, we still have the last 10 minutes to go. So please feel free to, you know, to put your questions onto the chat. We'll be happy to answer them uh, you know, uh, with the panel over here. Uh, I think finally, uh, and again, you know, very quickly, uh, what do you think is really the future of alternative health uh, in India and in the world? And how could we make it affordable and accessible? Just very quickly from each and every one of you, starting with uh, Dr. Kohli. Uh, uh, the future of IU systems, I think, is all right. Uh, one, that it is go going to get globalized whether you like or you don't like it, the world has become a global village. So everything will move on. Ayush will also move on. 
uh, Ayush doctors uh, will be gradually recognized everywhere and the practice of Ayush systems will be recognized everywhere. That is what the Ayush system, Ayush doctors are aspiring for. So that is going to happen in the uh, coming few years. The Ayush medicines to be uh, exported to other countries as medicine is a, is a distant dream still. It might take another one or two decades because they, uh, the globe wants to stick their own, to their own uh, standards to which we are not able to uh, fulfill their standards. That's one. The education system of Ayush will prosper and the co-location, there will be an informed choice to everyone uh, on the globe as, as far as Ayush systems is concerned. Thank you very much. Yeah. Dr. Shop, any comments on this very quickly? On Yeah, this? so quickly, I think, so anything to thrive in, you know, over a period of time and of course over a larger uh, number of people, I think data is the most important thing. And the data is basically, you know, uh, we, and therefore as a company, we emphasize on clinical trials for all of our products. We have multiple trials that we do, single, uh, uh, you know, open studies, double blind crossover studies, etc., And against you know, modern uh, medicine products as well. And to show and thereby show how our products work as good or even better than some of the molecules that are available. I think that's the single most important thing that is required to spread the awareness, to spread emphatically that these products work because beyond the point, that's the only thing that will survive time and convince people is hardcore scientific data. Along with as what you have also done is standardization of products because that is the most important thing as well. So I think a combination of all these things is what has even helped us to expand our products uh, in different markets where uh, you know these are expected, uh, uh, accepted because of the clinical trials that we present. So standardization and and you know double blind trials is what you're really recommending. Would actually, I think that's the only way to substantiate whatever is being said because uh, you know while the importance or while the popularity increases, I think all of us know, including uh, you know Dr. Mehta and yourself, that that also gives rise to a lot of people who join the bandwagon and do not have the credentials either in their practice or the products that they sell, and unfortunately it gives a bad name. So I think I that is why you. I agree with you. I'm saying we've just uh, you know released a book which was done this morning also by Mr. Raj, was actually uh, healing people, changing lives, which is a documentation of about 170 difficult to treat cases with all the medical evidences. You know, Absolutely. I agree that that is really the need of the hour. And uh, uh, make you one last point. I will add, uh, sorry, I will uh, end my one line, if you don't mind. Sure, sure, sure. It's just, uh, is that, uh, you see, while technology is a double-edged sword, right? While it's going to help us propagate this whole system, uh, it is also... Uh, can lead to a lot of other issues. And therefore, regulation from a government point of view is critical, especially in the complementary medicine side. I would say, you know, with all the international experience that I have, with, you know, with our company being in many countries, I think food and healthcare are the most regulated. And exactly. The most difficult. You Which know. need to come in here. Unfortunately, yeah. in India, that's not really so. So certainly there's scope for more regulation. Uh, Mickey, the last uh, you know question to you, and then we have a few questions, and just you know, uh, in, in, in no, just I think one you minute, always be you always be delighted. Not take on on how can what what do you think is the future of yeah, yeah, yeah. of alternative medicine? I want to give you a piece of news which will delight you all. Yes. That I have a niece in UK and a nephew in US. They are both now studying medicine, and internally they tell me that everyone is inquiring about Ayurveda and homeopathy although not vociferously. So can you imagine the youngsters today of 2021 learning medicine abroad in the West are intrigued by the systems of Ayurveda and homeopathy. And they discuss with me on the phone. And then, you know, they at home they've started. See, clarified butter shots, coffee shots. Starbucks started because we had tea. Of course, a turmeric mill has become a you know, turmeric latte. So Ayush systems, kadas, our herbal teas, our yoga, our pranayama, our Ayurveda, it is unstoppable. When everything fails, this works. You know, I worked with only two basic medicines. One is Trishun. So Trishun is a broad spectrum antibiotic, which has uh, three Bhavan Kirti, and it has Sudarshan Churna. And the other medicine which I worked was Lakshmi Vilas Ras Nardia. 
these two medicines work like miracles. I mean, they control the fear, they work on the fever, they work on the respiratory tract, lungs. Of course, I did it under proper supervision of qualified Ayurveda doctors. Thank and you, doctor. They gave Thank you. Very good results. Very Thank good you. results. Thank so you. So Ayush is a way forward. Thank you, Mickey. We are now in the last few minutes of our panel discussion. I just like to take a few questions. Uh, we have some, you know, uh, appreciation from uh, Rina Duyora and uh, also from Pramita Shroff saying that uh, it's great information and is the need of the hour. And thank you for this amazing, uh, you know, panel. To all of you, congratulations. Uh, there's also a question from Mudit Jain on why allopathy is given special treatment compared to other systems of medicine. And I will push that to Dr. Kohli a little later on. Yeah. And another one, uh, which has uh, also come from Rathan, which talks about does guduchi consumption improve immunity? And I put that to Dr. Ram. And there's one question, final question, which is about uh, from A.S. Malik, which talks about what is the scope of Yunani medicine? And uh, also something from Anil Khandelwal about stress, sedentary lifestyles, and how they are leading to uh, so many diseases, and uh, how do we address the toxicity that we have at the moment? So may I start one by one, just one line answers from all of you, because we have to close now in three minutes. I'm very, very particular about the timing. So could I please have uh, Mickey tell me about, about Yunani, any comment on Yunani that you'd like to give? Yes, I would certainly say that Yunani is probably a stepbrother or stepsister of Ayurveda. And they do a lot of good work. The only problem is that Yunani hasn't been promoted well. But thanks to Ayush, I've been watching Ayush in the last one year, especially in the center and in the state. They've been giving enough credence to genuine Yunani people as well. And uh, me and my practice right down below or higher up, people have used Yunani, Ayurveda, and especially lots of homeopathy. I saw as very many top friends who use your medicine. They said they swear by it. I would tell people that believe in nature, swear by nature, embrace nature, and you will always be healed and well. Thank you, Mickey. Thank you so much. Uh, a quick answer, just a one-line answer on the medicine, Ayurvedic medicine for building immunity, Dr. Ram. No, so I think the question was related to Guduchi, which is yes. also, you know, now the famous Giloy is something that everyone knows of because in this one year, I, uh, I think, see, all herbs... And of course, Giloy and Guruji are extremely popular and potent as far as immunity building is concerned. But I and there's enough evidence. But please understand anything that you take. My advice is always please take it under supervision of a qualified practitioner because it is extremely important. At the end of the day, this is health, and therefore the context under which you're taking something is very important and needs to be ascertained. Of course, there's enough data. But it's also subjective to what is the source that you're taking this material from and also to what extent and what is the potency of all of this. So there are many variables. All I can say is that enough documentation, but please go to the right people to assist you in qualifying what you require. That's uh, you, I'll end by that. Thank you very much. Uh, final question to you, Dr. Kohli and... and uh... And just in one minute, please. I know yeah. it's a very complex question and it probably needs many years to answer. Yes. <laughs> My friend Mudith has asked it. Uh, uh, allopathy has been given more importance because it has got emergency medicine. You cannot survive. Anybody can survive without taking Guruchi, without taking Ashwagandha. But nobody can survive. If he's in ICU, he wants those allopathic medicines which are required. It is just because of the emergen emergency. One. It is because uh, they have a technology now which is so advanced for operations. So there are surgeries which are with high technical precisions that have made allopathy gain ground over the other systems of medicine. But nonetheless, Ayush is also getting its due importance. That doesn't mean giving more importance to allopathy doesn't mean uh, demeaning Ayush systems. The government of India is taking care to uh, nurture both of them. Thank you, Dr. Kohli. And thank you for all the effort and all the help that you're doing to promote Ayush, not only in Maharashtra, but also in Southeast Asia. Thanks a lot. Uh, I'd now like to close by thanking all of you for this, you, all your time and uh, for having joined us, all the panelists as well. And 
I just like to close by saying that no system of medicine is complete by itself. With the onslaught of new viruses and new diseases, we need to have an integrated approach and use all the arsenal available to us, whether it's allopathy, homeopathy, or tirupathy. <laughs> you know, yeah. uh, the science of medicine, it has been said, is the art of healing. In spite of Gen X medicine and all the modernization in healthcare, the patient will always be at the heart of the doctor. Thank you all for your time and for your attention this afternoon. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you, sir. Thank you so much for your valuable words. This session was amazing. And I hope, ladies and gentlemen, you all are having an enlightened experience here. As we promised, there, was, there would be a lot on cards. So new ideas, growth perspective, the present and future of